I mean, a lot of people complain about your airplane food, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> they do. I, I, do you know what? I, I feel, now that I've been with the, some of the development guys, yeah. I feel very sorry for that because they work so hard. Because mm. it is hard. Yeah. Because you know, it's so dry in there that you, you lose your taste buds. So you definitely tasted different. That sandwich that you had on the ground, as soon as you ate it up in the air, just bland? Yeah. Nothing? Because what happens is that the, the atmosphere in the plane, it's drier than the Sahara, so you don't produce as much saliva. So right. that obviously activates your taste buds. The noise distracts from your taste buds, almost that you, you, your ears are concentrating, kind of just <laughs> getting to hear, so you lose a little bit of your sensation. Right. Um, and it numbs everything, oh. which is why airline food, if you have it on the ground, if you're in reverse, yeah. then you have an airline meal and it tastes salty, sure. it's got stronger curry flavours, so it, it's fascinating. So they've got to get that balance right, though, haven't they? Right. When I'm on a plane, I want a Bloody Mary. Right. And it's because that has a bit more salt, has a bit okay. more flavour, and they sell more tomorrow to juice than anything else. They do, so yeah. it's, it's actually a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a fact, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So were you doing this while you were still doing Strictly? Oh, so that day, <laughs> I'd been training been crazy. with Karen. We'd been dancing till about 11 o'clock the night before. We flew at 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'd got to the airport. We literally sat on the plane for four and a half hours. We did all of that stuff. We turned around for two hours, flew back, did more filming. Then I got off the plane and think, What's just happened? <laughs> but, right. but the whole world, when I was doing Strictly, I had no idea what was going on. But you just loved it, didn't you? Oh, you absolutely. You could see your wee face every week. Brilliant. You were so happy. Brilliant. Because it's terrifying, Lorraine. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I really do. Terrifying. Because you're out of your comfort zone. Oh, yeah. You have no idea what's going on. Mm. And I've got to say, you know, I say it every single time, Karen Clifton was the best. She made me believe, and that's what it's about. It's all a bit instilling confidence, isn't it? You've got to get that partnership. You've got to get that trust yeah. between each other. Yeah. Or it just doesn't work. When you're doing it. Never. Never in a million years. See that bit where they say, and ah, now, take it to the dance floor. What, what's going on inside your body? Are you not just, like, shaking? And so that first week, <laughs> I did the Paso Doble. So I'm standing on a box, you know, dancing the Paso Doble, Karen Clifton. And at that moment, if someone said, listen, you don't have to do this, you can put your coat on, and you just, can go, I would have taken that. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot hear the music, because right. your heart is... Pound. And, you, and your ears, it's all going. Yeah, and you think of the intercepts, which was quite a common thing for yeah, my yeah, six yeah. weeks on street. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, but, but you loved it. And do you still dance? No, I haven't. Not and so I saw Karen the other week. We went out, went to see Aston perform, actually. Oh, lovely. And uh, she was saying, so if you dance since we finished, it. Because mm. it'll be there, you see. It'll yeah, be there, all there's that, that bit knowledge. Of muscle memory. Absolutely. Yeah, I think maybe I think maybe I move better when I'm in the car listening to music. That's about as good as it gets. Still great, though. A great thing to do. Uh, it's Absolutely great brilliant. thing to do. You should do it. No. No, I just would be... I'm going to start a campaign. No, I've said before, I would just be rubbish and not funny rubbish. Just... Terrible. Oh. <laughs> just terrible. But I salute all of you who do that, because you've got to really put the work in. You've just got oh, you to do. put the work in. Yeah, but yeah. that's what you're like, though. You do that with everything that you do, you know, whether it's the show on TV, whether it's this show, you know, whether it's your business. You know, you're always so enthusiastic about food. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, I just feel that I'm very lucky in my life, you know, and, and you kind of make your own up. I love it. I, yeah. I, I enjoy everything that I do, you know, whether, it, whether you're right, whether it's like with the businesses, whether it's doing Sunday brunch, whether it's doing tricks to the restaurant trade, whether it's yeah. doing Strictly, you just think, I'm very fortunate, you know, it, doors open that you sure. never imagined when you're growing up will happen. And it's just been, and it still is a great adventure. That's what, that's the best possible thing. Now, tricks of the restaurant trade, what I thought was fascinating, you learn so much from this show. Um, you know when you go in sometimes, if you go to, particularly at quite a posh restaurant, if it's a big occasion, and somebody gives you a wine list, and you just think, I don't know what to do here. And, and oftentimes people will just pick the second or third one. Yeah. That's a big mistake, isn't it? You see, there's lots of things. That I, I, I don't always agree with everything that kind of goes out on the show's right. well. Because I think what happens is there's lots of structure. Certainly with our businesses, every single one on our list is great. Yeah. But there is a whole thing about saying, well, you know, the second and third down are the ones where people are making the biggest margin. I think that's quite an old-fashioned principle, but I think right. it does happen. Are you best just to have the house wine? Do you think? Well, I, I think, <laughs> for, for me, the house wine should always be brilliant because yeah. that's what you sell most of, exactly. from my point of view. You know, that's why got, I always think... Well, we've got 12 restaurants and the house wine, every single restaurant, is brilliant because right. that's what most people want. Yeah. So you don't want to go, oh, that's a bit rubbish. It's the first thing, <laughs> it's the first thing they're going to have. It's got to exactly. be brilliant. And it's such a good team that you've got. I mean, you've got, you've got Adam on board, haven't you? He's a brilliant journalist. He's great. He's yeah. a smashing journalist. I've watched him in a lot of things and he's always incredible. It's very funny. Yeah, he's it's got funny. a very dry sense of humour yeah. um, and he's very sarcastic when you're out with him, which I like. We like that. Yeah. We do. So we can expect lots more tips. 
Yeah. We'll find out what we should eat on an aeroplane to get yeah. the best possible, and we should drink Bloody Marys. Drink, well, always. Just, just all just the time. For life, that's a good thing. <laughs> for breakfast, dinner and tea. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Full of, full of iron. Yes. One of your five a day. Yes. Happy days. Simon, thank you very much. Thank Joy to talk to you. Thank you.